Hi Laura, it's Elena Kiria here. I hope you're doing well. So I've got an interesting proposal for you. I'd love to know more about what the day in the life of a regulatory consultant actually looks like. So I'm pinging you across some key questions. Let me know your thoughts and we'll share them with our network. Take care. Bye. My name's Laura Irwin Rossing and I'm from Australia. I live in Denmark. We have three children. One's eight, one is three and one is one. I work in regulatory affairs and medical devices um, as a freelancer. I do pretty much everything that the companies ask for um, as long as I can. I chose to become a freelancer because I felt that it was a good move for me, um, both on a personal level and a, and a professional level. I love seeing new companies, I love meeting new people, I love troubleshooting and working on all different types of problems. I chose to take this career route because I felt that it was a good decision for me and my family um, and also because I felt as a person it was a good option. Now the baby's crying <laughs> and I have to go again. Okay, so now I'm in my office, um, which is pretty much not much at all. <laughs> you asked me about why I chose this career route, I did it. I think again another answer is that is that my I wanted to become self-employed. I wanted to sort of check like experience the business side of things, um, and I felt like I had a lot to give, um, and I also had needed to build on my understanding of how businesses work, also to be in the regulatory field. Okay, I've just walked into the other room where I'm going to put up a temporary office soon because of Corona. Um, so that the kids can still be home while I'm working. The thing that I wish I knew is that marketing is possible for freelancers and consultants, even though we've never done it before. It's actually, um, we know a lot about our field and we we know a lot about our field and we can actually uh, talk to our customers um, at, where we're trying to sell ourselves to get tasks. It's actually possible. Both. <laughs> I like both all the time. That would be my window. I love sitting next to the window. I love the sun shining in and I love fresh air. The most common associated myth, I think, from people that aren't in the field is that you're earning heaps and heaps of money um, because running a business, as you know, Elena, your money also disappears to everything else. Um, the thing within the field is that you have to be a specialist. Um, I found that a lot of companies really need a generalist to come in and help lift everywhere in the way that they see fit. Okay, um, now I've just, I'm, I'm not take, move, showing the moves, but I've run into the other room because the baby's awake and he's looking for me. Um, this is my second meeting room um, where my son, it's my son's bedroom where I can sometimes shut the door if I need it. What do I love about my role? I love the flexibility. I love the fact that I get to do different sorts of tasks. I get to meet different sorts of people um, on different levels of management or on the floor. It's great. I feel that that dynamic really um, lightens. Like it, it, I love it. Yeah. A bit of advice I would give is that starting a business as a consultant is probably the easiest business form we'll ever be able to start. So if we have that urge or desire, go for it. Um, it's pretty risk free. Um, it doesn't cost you a lot to start um, and you can pretty much pack up from one day to the next. You're not like others that have to buy a whole warehouse um, or, or rent space or anything like that. The other thing would be is to listen to your customers because we have a lot of preconceived ideas based on the companies that we've worked in and they often don't fit other places. Um, I've learned a lot by listening to my customers. This would be um, listen, relax, be humble. The whole idea that everything is flexible. Um, I get up and I help get the kids off to school and and then I can start my day quite easily. That's what gets me out of bed is that I'm not rushing from the moment that I wake up to the moment that I go to sleep. They are that you have to do everything from A to Z in your company. You have to have, you have to seek work, you have to have things in the pipeline, you have to perform work, finalise things, follow up all at once for all different types of customers. The best career advice I ever got was actually from one of my bosses called Marianne Hoy, where she said that even though you're good at something, it doesn't mean you can't do something else. And she was right. There's a lot of jobs around us, a lot of tasks, like just off what we're doing, that we can usually do 70 or 80% of without having to put too much effort in. And I think it's that 
whole thing about daring to try and daring to fail. That would be, be more a phrase like, what do you need help with? <laughs> um, I ask that all the time, or where are you at? Um, or the other probably phrase that I use is, um, how do you see this? Like, or how do you, how, how have you chosen to approach this? There's a few, uh, probably the more favorite sayings. Um, so one of them is from my nan, my grandmother, who said, stick up for yourself. And I think she's quite right here in this area. You, you know, you can very, all of a sudden feel very small um, and insignificant and, um, and you need to stick up for yourself and stand your ground. But at the same time, also recognizing your limitations. Um, my nan also said, look, you're smart enough, you're working out. And I think that's also something that a lot of people need to remind themselves you are smart enough you will work it out and if you don't you'll also work out that you're not smart enough to do it and that you will say refer like for example refer, refer your customers onto somebody else the more you practice that the quicker you get it realizing that this is something's a bit bigger than you probably to stick to the reasons why i started my company which was to have more flexibility on the home front i found that there's the work's piling in at the moment um and i'm even looking at doing a, at least a six day working week the first few months of next year which is a success criteria but it's also um not the reason why i started my company but i feel that it's worth trying and giving a go and after that will you know at some point things will die down i hope at the moment i am working from about seven till three three thirty so around eight hours a day um so we we'll get up early get the kids off to school work i sit at my computer straight away i work until the kids need to be picked up and then i'll often walk down and pick them up or at least the two little ones um my working day like work wise um, i shift a lot between customers so sometimes i allocate a morning to a customer sometimes i allocate an hour or two depending on on what their needs are so another piece uh, of advice, if you're doing a company like this, again, is listen to your customers. Um, I found that probably the key to my success, at least in the beginning, has been very be, to be flexible with my customers. So a lot of them don't want, especially the smaller companies, which I, I mainly work with and I really enjoy, they don't want someone full-time all the time and they don't have the budget for it. So actually, if you offer 10 hours a week, five hours a week or something, often you'll find you get lots of good small customers um, and that also spreads your risks. So for risks, so for example, if something like Corona hits again, luckily for me, I had several customers. So if one or two of them decided not to continue with our agreement, then I at least had someone else um, in like that I was working with or in the pipeline. Um, and that has been a huge um, comfort factor for me, actually, that I felt like I at least had enough to pay my bills if the worst happened. But so a day in a working day for me is that I get up work on one two three customers depending on what they need the phone often rings um i also allocate time for that because i think it's only fair if they have a question which means that they can move on with something that i answer it i take it and we work on it together um yeah and honestly the day flies by i, I really don't have a chance for much else um any sort of courses i want to take i have to take in the evenings because it's um or on the weekends or whatever because there's just really not time at the moment the consultancy world has changed a lot since I started our company. Um, I started when I actually also found out I was pregnant with a third child and therefore I was not interested in doing long-term contracts full-time other places. Um, and I basically, my criteria was that I would work remotely um, and that was possible also before Corona. There was actually a lot of customers that wanted that because either they didn't have a space or they didn't want to see me all the time or whatever. Um, they just wanted the job done. Um, so working remotely is a possibility, um, even, and I think even in the future, especially for the small companies. I would definitely say small. I really love working for the small companies. Um, they have a lot of great tasks that you can do. They have a good understanding that you're not a specialist at everything. And they also appreciate that you bring the knowledge in that you do, um, even if it may not always be perfect. That is that I can see my customers, especially the smaller companies, start to talk in the medical device sort of risk-based area where you can hear them discussing things and um, and focusing on like health and safety issues or, or traceability or something where they didn't do it before. That makes me really proud of them. Um, and I've seen quite a lot of that. They they learn quickly and they um, they really perform very, very well. 
So hopefully soon I'll also be able to say goodbye to them um, and best of luck. Yes, I have plenty of colleagues. People call them competitors as well, but I've actually found that a lot of people are willing to help each other. Um, and we're also very different. So we tend to like have different customers based on our personalities. So in that sense, we don't, I don't see them as competitors. Um, we find also too that sometimes we need, we can work for each other. Um, for example, I'll be doing an audit soon for some cust for, for a girl who I actually hired in for something else to help me. Um, and that's, um, that's really, really nice to get that synergistic sort of um, collaboration up and running. I hope that other people get inspired to become freelancers if they feel it's something they want to do. Um, I'm also here if they want to reach out to me. Um, one person that I've actually found as a late, as a girl, um, has been really inspiring is a girl called Jessica Fernley, who's a, um, a consultant in England. And she has like some pod, really, really good podcasts that have been very motivating for me. So I'd really recommend anyone to listen to them because they, um, they do hit the nail on the head quite a lot about all the feelings that you can go through about being sort of alone in your own business and the risks that are involved. Um, she brings it down to a level, which makes it easier to tackle. Um, but Elena, thank you so much, and I also wish you the best with your company. I find you also very inspiring. Um, it's really lovely to see other women out there succeeding. Um, it's also inspiring for me to see other men succeeding too in their consultancy companies. Um, I think it's great to see there's a whole group of us now that are out there offering our services to companies um, and that they're taking us in um, even on part-time and ad hoc basis where we can give our knowledge and, and experience to them and, and help lift them, especially in the medical device area, which is becoming so, um, so complicated right now, um, and for the best too.